Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length feature review video we'll be going over the brand new MSI GS75 Stealth. Weighing in on the primary focus of this particular laptop it's going to be a gaming centric build that comes equipped with the NVIDIA RTX 2080, 2070 or the 2060. It's a 17.3 inch screen so it gives you the larger screen real estate. And the particular screen on here is definitely focused for gamers. It's a 1920 by 1080p resolution with a 144 hertz refresh rate. What this laptop is not would be a clone of the GT75 Titan, which is the behemoth gaming machine that has nothing but one focus of having the most powerful hardware possible and nothing else matters. The GS75 Stealth tries to focus on size, weight, portability, and of course a good battery life. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more average, Go ahead and stay tuned to this review because you might just find what you're looking for. So with following our traditional review format, the very first thing we'll do is our unboxing so you can see what you'll get inside. Now you can see we're using the double box here with the plain cardboard outside box and the black MSI box on the inside. Once you get to your inside box and get that open, you won't have very far to dig before you can get to your laptop. It's located right on top. Now as far as protection for the laptop, you have the plastic cover over the top. That's going to keep it from getting scratched up or scuffed up, keeps it from getting wet. The box itself around the laptop is what's protecting it from getting crushed or dented. Right underneath of that, we're going to find our little warranty manual. Now back inside the larger cardboard box, that's where you're going to find a secondary box. And this is going to have all of our power accessories. So here we are, we have our power cable. This will be different depending on your region and then the actual power adapter itself. So a quick close up of all the different connecting pieces of the power adapter. And as far as the actual specs, if you want to take a moment to pause, this is a 230 watt power adapter. So again, the focus of the GS75 Stealth is going to be that size and weight. So you can see the weight is only five pounds and zero ounces for the laptop. And once you throw in your power adapter, that brings your total carry weight up to six pounds and 15 ounces. So less than seven pounds of total carry weight, which is not bad at all. And you do get an eight hour battery life if you take a fully charged laptop. Now for our size measurements, we have a quarter for scale. Now you can see one quarter is actually larger than the biggest part of this laptop. It's less than one inch thick. And as we usually see with these ultra thin laptops, the front measurement is about the same as the rear because there's not enough room for a wedged shape. They've got it as thin as possible front and back, which makes it very easy to fit into a bag. Now here we are with the laptop opened up and powered on for the first time. And this is the very first moment that you can really appreciate this laptop because of that beautiful 17.3 inch screen and the ultra thin bezel. So even though you get the really big screen, it carries more like a 15 inch laptop. Over in the right hand corner, we can see our sticker badge that advertises a lot of the brand name features we have here, including that 144 Hertz refresh rate. We have the Steel Series RGB backlit keyboard. Each and every one of the keys on the laptop keyboard has three individual LEDs underneath of it to give you a lot of different lighting effects. Moving over towards our left hand side, we'll see our Intel and Nvidia badges. And of course, front and center, we have the super large oversized touchpad. It does have the left and right click buttons built into it instead of separated. But overall, it still makes for a very useful navigation experience due to its large size. Now, as far as the rest of the forward facing parts of the laptop, of course, we have the screen there. And around the very, very thin bezel, you still have your integrated microphones and high definition webcam. So let's move along over to the edges and look at our interfaces for connectivity. 
we do have a Type-C USB 3.1 port, two more Type-A USB 3.1 ports, and then we have a Thunderbolt 3 port. After that, we have our standard HDMI output and of course our intake for the cooling system. Over onto the rear of the laptop, there is no interfaces located here, but you do see the two exhaust vents for cooling. And lastly, over on the left-hand side, we'll see the other intake port, the DC power port for charging and running off of mains, RJ45 for local network connectivity, another USB 3.1 Type-A port, an SD card slot, and two 3.5 millimeter connections, one for your headphones and one for your microphone. A little bit of information about your network connectivity. Killer, who is a well-known gaming enthusiast brand, has provided both the wired and wireless connectivity parts in this laptop. Now it's time for us to jump into the system and take a look at the device manager. Here you're going to see your NVIDIA RTX 2070 with Max-Q design. That's the lower powered part for laptop use, so it uses a lot less power, creates less heat, and gives you the better battery life. Our Core i7-8750H from Intel for our CPU power. Here is the monitor ID if you'd like to look that up. This is again a 1080p screen, but with a 144 hertz refresh rate and a three millisecond response time. The next thing to take a quick look at is gonna be the MSI Dragon Center. This is a great heads up display that gives you all of your system information and a lot of system control. So everything from changing your fan speeds to the color profile on your screen, this is definitely something you wanna take the time to check out once you get your laptop. So the next great piece of software MSI gives you that you're gonna to wanna to check out is gonna be the RGB keyboard controlling software. You have lots of really good presets to choose from, but of course you can drill down and create any kind of other color combinations you'd like on your own. So now at this point in the review, we're about to move into our benchmarks. And the first thing we wanna do is get our baselines. So our baseline temperatures right now, we're looking at about 80 degrees Celsius on the high end for our CPU amongst all the cores. And down a little bit further, we have our GPU temperature and currently our GPU is running 47 degrees Celsius. The other baselines that we want to be sure to collect before we move into the performance benchmarks is also going to be our sound and heat baselines. So right now we're measuring about 25 to 26 decibels on our intake. And as you can see, the exhaust is more or less exactly the same. Now it's time to take a quick peek at our thermal temperatures using our infrared camera. And what we're looking for here is to make sure that nothing crazy is going on with hot spots where your hands might be laying on the laptop because that makes for a very uncomfortable experience. And we want to make sure that the system is getting all the heat evacuated out of the unit and into the air where it belongs so that all the gaming hardware can stay nice and cool. So far, the thermals are looking really good on this laptop because there's definitely no hot spots at all where your hands would be. And we'll see how that does once we put it under load. All right, so now we have our system under load running some of our performance benchmarks. It's time to check our baselines again and see how they're doing with the system under load. As you can see, the sound levels have definitely gone up. We're closer to 50 decibels, even up to about 55 decibels as far as how the fan noise is going. And as we check each side individually, you see there is a big difference as far as the sound between one side and the other, which means we have independent fan control of our GPU and CPU.
We also want to be sure to check back in with our temperatures and see how the system is handling the heat. Now, as far as hot spots, there are none. It's definitely handling those spots really well. It's a large chassis with a 17.3 inch screen, so it gives us plenty of airspace to keep the hot components away from our hands. The important thing will be also checking our temperatures after the benchmark is done to see what the CPU and GPU managed to get up to. One of the other things we like to look for on the thermal camera is going to be the exhaust areas. We do want to see very high temperatures there because high temperatures here mean all the heat's leaving the system. And you can tell a lot more air is coming out because you see the streaks of heat across the tabletop. All right, with Firestrike now finishing up, it's checking in with a score of 14,928. That's a really good score considering we're running the RTX 2070 Max-Q edition. So remember, you still have the option of the 2080 if you prefer a little bit more horsepower. And this is the Max-Q edition, so you still get great battery life and lower temperatures. Now, as far as how our temperatures did during the testing, the CPU managed to get to about 95 degrees Celsius as an average and our GPU was only up to a maximum temperature of 69 degrees Celsius. So our, our GPU stayed nice and cool. CPU got a little bit warm, but this is no warmer than many other laptops in the same category. So we're not quite done with our benchmarks yet. We still have Cinebench R15 to run. And what we're gonna be looking for here is the frames per second that we managed to get on this run. With Cinebench finishing up, it's checking in with a score of 92.73 frames per second. And as you can see down in the ranking chart, it's very highly ranked on the built-in charts. All right, time for one more sound test. And this is going to be the sound levels of the speaker system. All right, we are now moving into our final portion of our review, which is going to be the disassembly of the unit. So along the perimeter and a couple of screws near the center area, we have to remove all of those screws to get the entire bottom panel taken off. As you can see here, there's a lot of different screws and they are of different sizes. So be very careful if you take apart your laptop to keep those in order. So the first glance does not reveal everything. You do get to see your cooling fans. You get a glimpse of your speakers, your battery, and your M2 slots for your SSDs. But definitely there's other things on the other side of the motherboard. And to get there, we're gonna have to pry up our heat shield. All right, so now it's time to take a deeper dive. We see our very large battery here. 
We have our two speakers on the right and left edges. We'll take a quick look over at both sides of that. We do have room for three M2 SSDs, so there's gonna be room for expansion there as far as adding extra capacity. Up here, we're gonna have our wireless card. This is gonna be for both your wireless connectivity and your Bluetooth. Our cooling fans are located here, but the heat pipes are on the other side. One quick close-up of our battery so you can see the maximum battery capacity. And this is a 5,280 milliamp hour battery. So the next step for us is to remove all those smaller bits off of the motherboard and we can go ahead and lift that up. And now you can see the heat pipe cooling system. And we're also going to find where our system RAM is located. So it will be quite a lot of trouble to get to your system RAM. And it does only have one slot occupied by the factory defaults. So keep in mind, you can go ahead and upgrade your RAM with us during the checkout process. And we can upgrade it for you and take care of all the trouble and keep it covered under your warranty. And so for the very last thing we wanted to show you before you went today is going to be what it looks like underneath of the cooling solution. So some more screws are removed and now we can take the whole cooling solution off. You can see how incredibly thin those fans are. So they have to work so hard to keep all of this hardware cool. And that's why we have two of them for our CPU. Underneath of that, you'll get a glance at the CPU and the GPU. Notice this is the Max-Q edition. It is on board, unlike the GT75 Titan, which has the MXM slot. And that's the full disassembly and the full review of the MSI GS75 Stealth. So in closing for today's full length feature review video, we just wanna say thank you very much for taking the time to watch. If you found yourself interested in this particular system, go take a look in the video description and find the product page link. And there you can find the current pricing, availability, and the full system specs. Also, don't forget, we know it's impossible to answer every single person's questions with just one video, but we're not gonna let you go without your questions answered. So feel free to ask any questions you have down in the comment section below. Or if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, feel free to contact us by phone or email. So once again, we just want to say thank you very much for watching. This was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.